Update. Am I the a-hole for not telling my dad that my mom got married? Original post. My 17 female parents got divorced when I was 12 because my dad had a two-year-long affair with mom's best friend. It was really shameful because mom's best friend was with her since they were three. My mom had been pressured by dad's family that she forgives him, but instead, mom decided to divorce him. A lot of the family members actually stopped talking to my mom because of this, and some of her friends also took her BFF's side. For this reason, mom was very devastated. Over the years, she has been to two different therapists for the trauma she had. As for my dad, he dated my mom's best friend for a while before they broke up. That is when my dad realized he loved mom and tried everything to get her back. But my mom was stubborn and shut him off, and he was still on and off with Sylvia, mom's best friend. I had to be in this mess, especially with my dad who would always try to guilt trip me into convincing mom into getting back with him. I've heard from him things like, I wish we were a family together. It was just a mistake. I'm willing to do anything to make amends. I want us to be a family again, but your mom doesn't want to. I had enough of it. So when I turned 15, I decided to stay with mom and only visit dad on weekends because I cannot handle his constant nagging. Also, because during that time, my mom started dating Jack, who was the father of my classmate. My dad found out and started asking questions after questions about Jack. He wanted me to spy on Jack, but I had enough of it, so I strictly told him if he doesn't stop this nonsense, I would cut him off completely. A few months ago, my mom announced that she will be marrying Jack within a few days. They got engaged that day and only wanted a small ceremony with just few family members. It was a small gathering of only 15 people, just me and Jack's son along with some close family and friends. The wedding happened in Jack's backyard. They had photographer too, but my mom only recently posted the pictures after coming back from her honeymoon. My dad had no idea because mom didn't want him to know anything. She was afraid my dad would create some drama and cause a scene. I respected her wishes. Then my dad saw those photos and called me to confirm. I said yes, my mom got married a few months ago. My dad was angry. He called me a traitor and said I was an a-hole for keeping it away. That he has the right to know which man my mom was marrying. This was the last straw for me, and I told him to buzz off. He has lost all right over mom the moment he decided to stick his junk in Sylvia. That my mom knew he was an unhinged person, so I am glad she didn't tell him. I also told him to leave us the heck alone and hung up. My mom also got messages from him which I read. They were mostly of him accusing her of breaking up our family. Mind you, he is dating Sylvia again. Now, I hear from my cousins that my dad has started to act abnormal ever since, and I wonder if I went too far with it. Now for the top comments before reading the update. Hell no, you are the a-hole. Your father and his family are huge POS. Really? Really? They wanted your mom to stay with that trashy husband even though he's a disgusting husband? You are right. He lost any right on his former wife and his precious family the moment he cheated on her. Your mom had a really hard time overcoming the betrayal and divorce, and I'm glad she finally found someone worth it. Congratulations on your mom's wedding. Thanks. I am glad she found happiness on her own. I thought she might never date again, but Jack seems like a nice guy. I am still afraid what if it turns out like dad. That sounds like a reasonable thing to be afraid of, considering what you've been through. I'm concerned it might be impacting you too much though. Do you think it might be helpful to discuss that fear with a therapist? I think it might help. It probably would, but it won't prevent it, would it? I went to therapy for my own anxiety and fears, where a lot of it stemmed from my parents' relationships growing up. It's not about preventing it, but regaining control. I still have those thoughts, but they don't consume me anymore or incapacitate me. They used to control my decisions and how I formed relationships with people. Now I can rationalize through them and move past those anxieties. He's got no business involving his child in such things, and you're right to not give in to his demands. I think you already know that, but if you need to hear it, there it is. I don't know if it is right or wrong to let your ex-spouse know if you are getting married. I don't know the protocol. I just respected what my mom asked me to do since she didn't want many people to know about the wedding. You did the right thing. The only valid reason for him to care would be knowing who is around his child. That would be his job to ask her directly, and clearly that is not why he cares. He shouldn't be asking you to report on her personal life.
Now for the update. So something weird has happened. A few days ago, Sylvia came to my mom's house. I was there. She was shouting at mom and said that she's stealing her man, my dad, away from her. She literally said, you already had your fun with him. Why can't you just leave him alone? My mom just told her to get lost. But then Sylvia went on a rant about how much better she is than my mom and even threatened that she would sleep with her new husband as well. My mom told her if that ever happens, she will be doing her a favor by taking the trash out. And she trusts Jack would never hurt her. Mom then threatened to call the police and Sylvia that eventually made her leave the property. As much as I hate the drama, I must say watching that wretched woman have a meltdown because my dad was still hung up on my mom is precious. Apparently, dad dumped Sylvia again in hopes that mom would see that he is dedicated to win her back. Who knows how long that will last. My dad also got into a fight with a random person in a bar because he was drunk. I guess he is still coping with the feeling that mom is not going to be with him anymore. Thank God the guy didn't press charges. I had a heart-to-heart -heart conversation with him. At least I tried to. I asked him if he is so in love with mom, why did he cheat? And his answers were illogical. He said that as a man, it is hard to control the urges. At that time, Sylvia was flirting with him and he took a shot. He thought it would only be once and then he will dump her. But it went on for a long time. He said I won't understand it because I am not a man. A man can cheat but still love his wife and would die for his wife. He loves my mom, but he still has urges to be with other women. This conversation was going nowhere, so I didn't ask much. I just told him I hope his son-in-law doesn't treat me the way he treated my mom. He never gave me an answer to that. I still can't believe he would, to this day, think he's the victim. Anyways, I'm thinking about moving in with mom permanently. I know Sylvia would come by his house now. Can anyone please help me understand what it means? Because I always thought you cheat because you do not love that person. Maybe I am wrong in some way. Cheaters make excuses. That's what he's doing. Anyone, man or woman, can keep it in their pants despite the temptations, if they decide to. Exactly. If you truly loved and cared for someone, you'd keep your clothes on around others. It's especially shameful that he did this with her best friend. Not only did your mom lose her husband, she also lost a sister, in a way. Win her back? Dude, she's remarried. There's no coming back from that especially given the amount of toxic BS she's gotten since she dumped him. I hope this is the final stage of your dad's grief for this self-inflicted damage. I guess some people really feel that drama equals love and intensity, but your dad needs to get a clue that your mom isn't one of them. It was too late so many years ago, and I'm definitely team mom for valuing herself more than her wretched ex-husband did. Love, temptation, etc. People vary so much. I don't think we can make blanket statements. But I would say your dad loved the idea of himself that he proved wrong by his actions more than he loved your mom. I think in matters as complex as relationships, that a person with this in their family history needs to talk to professionals to help sort it out and get to a healthy view of relationships, rather than listen to their toxic drama dad. If you don't, there will be lifelong effects. And I know this through experience. I especially don't get the win her back sentiment because he just openly admitted that even if he does get her back, he will still cheat on her. She has made it abundantly clear that that is a deal breaker and somehow he thinks, even after all these years, that he can still be married to his ex-wife and have this side chick too. That Sylvia had always her eyes on him and your dumb father failed on her trip because it was a huge ego boost. Thankfully, but unfortunately for him, your mother is a queen and throw him away when she found out of his affair. Something he never thought about. She moved on and found a better man. He can't handle that. The reason he went to Sylvia again is just because he is pathetic and can't stay alone. There are plenty men who are devoted and faithful to their wives, so his disgusting excuses can go to trash. Now both of them are facing karma. Your father by losing definitely your mother and that woman never getting the man she is obsessed with. Last story. Am I the a-hole for not letting my ex take our daughter and move in with her new boyfriend? I don't even know where to start. My ex and I co-parent a wonderful nine-year-old daughter. I am not my daughter's biological father. I found out she was not mine when she was three. I left my ex but stayed in the life of my daughter because I was already dead and a bio father was not interested. 
who share 50-50 custody and have been able to co-parent effectively other than the last year. About 18 months ago, my ex got mad at me for having concerns about issues when she was parenting. I won't go into detail, but our ability to co-parent broke down. She took me to court and tried to force a DNA test and have my name removed from the birth certificate to where my daughter basically wouldn't have a dad. My daughter was seven and a half years old at this time, and I've been dead since before she was born. So, I got an attorney, and long story short, it did not go well for her. At all. The hearing officer was disgusted by what she was attempting to do, as my daughter knew me as dad and we had an extremely close relationship. I'm a good dad, and I was able to prove it. So I basically got to dictate the terms of the parenting plan. My child support was drastically lowered from what I was paying, and I was allowed to claim my daughter every other year for Texas. After the parenting plan was put in place, we patched things up and got into a good rhythm of co-parenting like we once had. There was no more threatening to keep my daughter from me, and my ex respected me as a co-parent a lot more because she is terrified of going back to court again. I have proof of her drinking and driving one time with my daughter in the car, with voice recording of her admitting it, as well as a few other issues that have happened since going to court. Fast forward to a couple months ago, my ex meets a guy and starts spending a lot of time with him. From what my daughter and ex tell me, he is a pretty legit guy. I have no reason to have an issue with him. I hear nothing but positive stuff about him for my daughter. Well, after dating about 8 weeks, my ex tells me that she's going to move into his house about one and a half hours away with my daughter. This would involve uprooting her from everything she's known, moving her farther away from me and having her change schools to a much more inferior school. My ex has a terrible track record with guys and has been in several harmful relationships. One of the men beat her so bad that he was one of my state's most wanted fugitives for what he did to her. But this was all before my daughter was born. He's my daughter's biological father. I told my ex that because the relationship has only been going on for eight weeks, she was free to move in with him, but my daughter would not be joining them, and we would have to rethink the cost of the arrangement to where I have primary physical if they moved forward. My ex became irate and told me that her boyfriend, who she is very much in love with, is threatening to leave her if they don't move in together because of the distance between them. That was another red flag. That the relationship is so fragile that this could cause a breakup? I'm terrified that my ex is going to get herself in a position where she lives with this guy, and there'd be violence, her fighting, and she can't escape. And my daughter would witness all of this. Because that's the history my ex has with relationships. Every other relationship other than ours has had violence in it. I told my ex that she would renew her lease and I will renew mine. And a year from now, if they're still together and happy, I would be willing to move to that city as well to make it all easy for everyone and our daughter. And I would not contest my daughter living there. Part of me feels like I'm being inappropriate and controlling by basically dictating my ex's relationship terms. But the other part of me feels like my concerns are legitimate. And that my daughter's life should not be uprooted for a relationship that is only 8 weeks old. In its infancy. I feel like I have a moral responsibility to kind of put guardrails on some of the decisions my ex makes when it affects my daughter due to her terrible decisions in the past. I have sacrificed a lot in life to make sure my daughter has a stable life and have always made myself the most stable person around her. It's why we have such a close relationship. I know it's a long story and there is more to it, but am I being a controlling a-hole here? I want my ex to be happy. She deserves that, but I also have to watch out for my kiddo. I am using the threat of legal action to control my ex. That's a fact. And I'm not at all afraid to follow through with it. Not the a-hole and it sounds like you're the only parent who's putting your daughter's needs first. Keep doing that, because it's clear your ex isn't. She tries, and she certainly loves our daughter. But she just makes bad and selfish decisions sometimes. Does your custody agreement with your ex contain any geographical restrictions? Such as one of you can't move further away from the other more than X miles or the neighboring county? This is normal here in Texas. Also, because your ex is terrified of going back to court, you can always tell her you will take her back to court for the reasons you mentioned above. The custody agreement says our daughter must remain in the state we currently reside in. 
And that's essentially what I'm doing. I'm using the threat of going back to court to prevent this situation from taking place. She just called me and said they will not be moving in together. And she is devastated because he's going to leave her now. I feel like crap about this, but I don't think I had a choice. Dude, his breaking up with her over this is just proof that you were right to be concerned. And quite frankly, there was no way on earth I would want my kids live with someone my ex had only known for 8 weeks. In my case, it's relevant because she left them 13 years ago. But seriously, that's really messed up. I'm with you 100%. It validates a lot of my concerns. But my ex is devastated and she blames me for it, not him. So I'm going to have to deal with and shield my daughter from that fallout. Not a hole. No way, no how. Moving that fast and isolation is a hallmark of future dangerous behavior. You're being entirely reasonable in your efforts to protect your daughter. Good on you. You don't know this guy and he's trying to isolate both your ex and your daughter. Don't let it happen. Go back to court if you have to. This is all sorts of wrong and don't let your daughter be alone with him. I want to go back to court and everyone says that, but in reality, it's not that simple. It takes six months to even get in front of a judge and there will be continuances. It could be the better part of a year before we get any kind of resolution. By then, she would have already moved. On top of that, you need $5,000 to put down a retainer for an attorney. And for family court, you need an attorney. And I don't have that. I still have debt from the last time we went to court. Rent went up. I pay child support. I have to maintain a stable household for my daughter. Otherwise, how can I say, give me primary custody? Everyone says to just go to court because I'll win, and I likely will. I'm a better parent and I can prove it. But the process is expensive and long. I could put in an emergency order and get full custody before the hearing, but that's high risk. Judges hate that, and you need a damn good reason. Plus, it would hurt my daughter. She won't understand why she can't see mom. Her routine would be appended, and I can't explain the situation to her why I'm doing what I'm doing because that would be parental alienation and hurt her further. That's why the threat of court is sometimes more effective than actual court. None of this is simple, 